Hey guys, this is Harvey, and today I will be doing a tutorial on motion tracked masking uh, for After Effects. Um, the effect I'll be showing you is quite popular actually, in quite a lot of skate edits, real life edits mostly, but I think they've done a few COD, edit, COD edits with them, but no, it's a, it's a really cool effect actually, but this is one of my edits, which I use the effect, and here it is. <laughs> That nice little mask in motion tract, as you see, he basically the snowboarder uh, mask, the snowboarder goes over himself and the image of him, after he passes it, stays where it is, so it's motion tract. But no one after effects, this is my clip, it's the same clip you've just seen, but I will be showing you what to do. So firstly you want a plugin for after effects called camera tracker 1.0. You can find that on YouTube, uh, you find it on Google, just search it up and you'll find a free, it's free I think. But no, all you need to do is apply the camera tracker to the clip, drag it over it, and this will come up. It looks quite complicated, but it's really simple. So all we need to do now, there's no frame rate involved, so all you need to do is go track features. So just click track features and that will track the clip. As you see it's starting, oops, wait. Nope, what you want to do before you do it is make sure the clip is full so it tracks it to its best so it gets every little detail. So yeah, track the features and it is stuttered as you see. It might take quite a long time. I think mine might take a bit more than I thought it was going to. So uh, I'll be right back once it's done. Okay, and the track features has done. So you can see if you roll through the clip. The, you see we've tracked it. It's got all the, um, the keyframes which is good. Okay, so now, once you've tracked the features, you want to solve the camera, which will take not as long. So, uh, click solve camera. Shouldn't take too long. There we go, solved. Should see all that. And then once you have done that, and that will, what basically that will do is it will narrow down the keyframes to the ones which I think you really want. So, um, give it a second and it should load up. Okie dokie, it has done, which is good, and I can see the keyframes are now green and red. So, now you want to choose your keyframes. You only have to choose two keyframes you do on this, and they have to be x-axis. So, if you look around, you want to see keyframes that stay there, and sort of around the place where you want your motion tracking to stay. So, I see these two keyframes right here, they're pretty much where I want the motion track to be and they're pretty stable as well so first you want to left click on one of them so it uh, highlights yellow and you go to the second one and you press control and left click again and you go on ground plane and set origin and that won't take much time whatsoever very quick we got to excuse my computer it is very slow so give it a second okie doke and then once that's done uh, all you have to press now is create scene which will create a null object and a camera object so create the scene and that won't take time whatsoever and there we go and as you can see they have a camera and a null object and you will see a red square appear which will show you if you go through it hopefully the red square will stay where I want it to go so if it stays there that means it's motion track so yeah that's pretty decent actually but no, obviously, for the next part, you would want to be, I want the person, I want the actual masking of him. So to do that, what we want to do is want to get our clip, which at the moment is 49, which I got from Clip Hive. I don't know why it's called 49, but um, I want to duplicate it. And I want to, after I duplicate it, Okay, after I duplicate it, you want to find where you want to freeze frame it, where you want the picture to be, to stay. Okay, I think I want it to be here, and then all I do is I go on to the clip, which I've duplicated, and go on right click, and go on time, and freeze frame. That should freeze frame this thing, so it's just a picture of where you want it to be. And we were here, so and now what you want to do now is you want to pull out the pen tool, and you want to mask out this little fella right there and you want to zoom in and basically 
I won't do it too accurate. I can't say the word even. I won't do it too detailed because obviously I'm just going to quickly rush this. But you can do it more detailed. I apologise for the quality by the way. Well, I've zoomed in quite a lot. But basically, just quickly, on this side anyway, you want to do it quite detailed because that's where she's going to be coming out of it, isn't she? So you want some picture covering up, and this bit isn't really, isn't really the most important bits. But I think, but no, that should be okay. And let's really stretch this out because you don't really want that. You want that to be masked too. So yeah, um, after that is masked, zoom out, and you have a picture there. If I look through, look, like, you can see it's there. But as you see, the little fella is moving, and it looks really ugly. So go back to your keyframe where you freeze framed it, which is here. And this is the tricky part. You want to go onto this bit here, the 3D cube, 3D layer, and your and your masking guy, the little mask guy. You want to click the 3D cube, and that will bring up this. And you just press OK. As you can see, I don't know where the hell he is. He's all the way up there. So you're gonna have to do. A, this is the hard bit. You're gonna have to transform him, you're gonna have to rotate him into that right spot, which is a real, real, but sometimes it's quite quick. So for a start, you wanna scale him down. It won't take the longest, but once you do it, it's a wicked effect, it really is. But no, um, let's zoom in a bit. Too much, I think. Uh, Okie dokie, and let's scale him down a bit more, maybe a bit up actually. The position down a bit, and you'll see once he's done. Wait, I'll quickly unselect it. Um, let's bring it a little bit over, a little bit over here. Basically, I want to scale up a bit actually. Obviously, you can work on it. I'm not sure that's not pretty spot on it's not the best but obviously if you can work on it it will look pretty good if you just I'm spending literally a few minutes on this spend a lot more time and it will look absolutely brilliant and but no if I take a look through obviously the little fella comes in there so I think I will be needing wait let's take a quick look at the time Okay, and we want to cut it there. Oops, wrong tool. I just pressed screen draw. But no, basically you want to split the layer, or pull it back, say here, and all it's going to do is it's going to go past it and it's going to stay there hopefully. So if I roll through, you see he stays there, which is absolutely brilliant, which is actually really good. And as you see he stays there, you can make that look really wicked. You can do a few of them. You just repeat it there. Do the same technique. You duplicate the layer again and do it again there and again there there. And voila. There you have your 2D motion track masking. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please ask me. And a good day. Thank you.